In addition to the asters and lagoons, dry, sandy, longleaf habitats support many other species of wildflowers. Several of these have white flowers that are attractive to bees, and moth caterpillars depend on the foliage as food. Carolina sandwort, or Mononuria caroliniana, in the buckwheat family, is often found in these sandy, dry landscapes. It tends to grow with lichens, and the leaves resemble moss, until it shoots up delicate white flowers with five petals in the spring. Coastal plain wire plant, or Stipulicida cetacea, is minuscule and easy to miss. The leaves and stems are thin like wire, and the flowers are tiny. Other white flowers to look for growing in sand include dawnflower, or stylisma, which is part of the morning glory family. These vines run along the ground with alternating, linear, bluish-green leaves and bloom during spring and summer. Also watch out for spurge nettle, or tread softly. The scientific name for this plant is Nidosculus stimulosus. When the three-lobed leaves are broken, they produce milky sap, like other plants in the family Euphorbiaceae. But be careful, since the plant is covered with stinging hairs. Nidosculus is derived from the Greek nide, meaning nettle, and scolus, meaning thorn. Southern jointweed, or Polygonella americana, appears shrub-like for most of the growing season, with dark, green, crowded, needle-like leaves resembling cedar. Found in sunny, dry, sandy areas, it is capable of withstanding extreme drought. Carolina pineland cress, or Waria cuneifolia, occurs in the driest white sands of the sandhills and is a member of the mustard family, Brassicaceae. It grows about one to three feet tall and has umbels of white to pink flowers that bloom July through September. The milkweeds in the genus Asclepius are an especially important group, particularly since caterpillars of the rapidly declining monarch butterfly feed exclusively on plants in this genus. Milkweeds are also important nectar sources to a wide variety of insects. Milkweeds occur in a range of habitats, but those most closely associated with Xeric Sandhills habitat includes Pinewoods milkweed, or Asclepius humistrata, and Sandhills butterfly weed, or Asclepius tuberosa, variety Rolfsii, variety of the butterfly milkweed, which has a wider distribution as a species. Pinewoods milkweed has a prostrate growth form with stems that are flat or nearly flat to the ground. Stems are purplish, a color that continues along the veins into the dull green leaves. Leaves are opposite, broad, and ovate, and may appear to clasp the stem at their base. The flowers are pink to white, with the corolla color generally a light pink compared to the hoods and horns that are cream to white. If the stem or leaves are torn, they will exude a milky, sticky sap. Sandhills butterfly weed has leaves that are alternate and narrow and have a wavy or rolled margin. The sap is clear rather than milky. Flower colors may be red, orange, or yellow. Milkweeds develop a pod-like fruit called a follicle that splits along one seam and release feathery, wind-blown seeds. The eastern prickly pear, Opuntia mesocantha, is a widespread cactus in North America and is typically associated with dry, sandy soils, including xeric longleaf communities. Its fleshy pads, which are actually modified stems, are protected by sharp spines, but are still sometimes eaten by animals, such as white-tailed deer, rabbits, and gopher tortoises, as are the red fruits. The large, showy, yellow flowers are visited by native pollinators. As the name implies, the grassleaf rosling, Cuthbertia graminia, has dark green, narrow leaves that resemble blades of grass. However, when it blooms in spring and summer, it is easily distinguished from grasses by its three-petaled flowers that range from light pink to deep rose in color 
and attract native bees and other pollinators. Longleaf ground cover also harbors a valuable woody component of shrubs coexisting among herbaceous plant communities. Smaller stature species are referred to as subshrubs. These low-growing species provide accessible food in the form of fruit, seeds, and plant materials for browsing. Flowering subshrubs provide pollen and nectar for beneficial insects like bees and monarch butterflies. Most of these species bloom during the late winter and early spring when few other plants have flowers. Woody plants host an abundance of moth and butterfly larvae, otherwise known as caterpillars, that are preferred food for songbirds and game birds alike. Thickets of subshrubs provide escape cover for animals including bobwhite and nesting structure for songbirds. Subshrubs in these fire-maintained habitats readily sprout back from the roots following a burn and offer structural diversity to the plant community. Dwarf huckleberry or Galacacia demosa and southern blueberry or Vaccinium tenellum are often found growing together. They are deciduous with small alternate leaves and dark bluish black or glossy black berries. Creeping blueberry or Vaccinium crassifolium has similar leaves that turn maroon in the fall, but the plant grows prostrate along the ground like a vine. Both huckleberries and blueberries have white, sometimes pinkish bell-shaped flowers as does another deciduous species, staggerbush. Staggerbush or Lyonia mariana flowers are much larger and it has large rounded leaves. Sand myrtle or Calmia buxifolia is an evergreen with tiny leaves crowded on the stems. It grows in clumps on sandy ridges and in spring dense clusters of white flowers attract early brooded butterflies such as hair streaks and elfins. Another evergreen, sheep laurel or Calmia carolina, also found on sandy ridges, has narrow leathery blue-green leaves with striking dense clusters of deep pink saucer-shaped flowers. Sandhills rosemary, or Ceratiola ericoides, grows up to six feet tall and is found at extremely dry sandy longleaf sites. While the evergreen aromatic and needle-like leaves resemble the herb rosemary, you would be disappointed if you tried to use it for cooking. Hypericum lloydii, or Sandhills St. John's wort, grows about a foot tall with deciduous linear leaves and showy yellow five-petaled flowers. Toxicodendron pubescence, or Atlantic poison oak, offers whitish yellow berries to wildlife and grows upright in sandy soil, as opposed to its viney relative, poison ivy. Poison oak leaves are deciduous and compound with three wavy-edged leaflets that resemble oak leaves. We hope that you've enjoyed this video and have found it beneficial. We also hope that it will inspire you to get out in the longleaf woodlands and find some of these species for yourself. Again, programs are available to assist landowners with fire breaks, burning, mid-story hardwood control, planting, and many other practices. Check with your local state forestry agency or the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service office to see what resources may be available to you.